Either for the European Boxing Union, Mr. Simon Block, General Secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control, the timekeeper, Mr. Tony Dunkley, our judges scoring the contest at ringside, Mr. John King of Northampton, Mr. Terry O'Connor of Birmingham, and Mr. Paul Thomas of Derby, and the man in charge of the action from Kent, Mr. Larry O'Connell. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, Hennessy Smoltz proudly presents tonight's main event, a contest of 12 three-minute rounds to decide the British, Commonwealth and European middleweight championship between and introducing the boxers. And firstly, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the purple colour trunks, the colours of the Bristol boys, coming from Plymouth, weighing in at 11 stone, five and a half pounds, he brings to the ring a 16 fight record of 15 wins, 10 wins coming by way of knockout with one loss. Please welcome the challenger for the titles, Scott Dan. Huge support of travel from Plymouth to see the man and in the purple the trunks. In the red corner wearing the gold trunks trimmed with green. Coming from uh, London, weighing in at 11 stone, 5 pounds, bringing to the ring a 38 fight record, 36 wins, 33 wins by way of knockout, with two losses, the current British Commonwealth and the European middleweight champion and world title challenger, presenting the Battersea Bomber, Howard Eastman. will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Howard Eastman just taking his time and they come to the middle of the ring where uh, Larry O'Connell will give final instructions. Neither boxer, it seems, in any great rush to uh, confront the other. I think Scott Dan just needs a little bit more water. And Scott Dan, the challenger, is making the champion wait a little bit longer. you both in the dressing you understand everything, get on with the match. Good luck. 12 three-minute rounds for the well, British Commonwealth and European Middleweight Championship. For the first round. All three of Howard Eastman's titles at stake. The European, the British and the Commonwealth Middleweight Crowns. And Eastman into action straight away. That was a slip. A little mix-up with the feet. There's some water on the ring. And Eastman against Scott Dynamite down the South Park, wearing the familiar purple trunks of the Bristol Boys Club where he's coached as he has been throughout his professional career by uh, former professional Chris Saniger. Eastman has been very, very busy indeed. This is his fifth fight in uh, six months after a year out following his unsuccessful attempt to win a world title. And we've seen Scott Dan in action demolish Delroy Leslie in November of last year, Richie. So we know that Scott Dan can punch a little bit. Yeah, he's, he's got a good left hand, and uh, he's got a good boxing sc style, Scott Dan, but you have to say this is the ultimate step up for him in terms of class. Howard Eastman is probably the most feared middleweight in the world, apart from obviously the undisputed champion, Bernard Hopkins, but, but Eastman straight away taking the fight to Dan. He, he really is, uh, he, he means business. As soon as, as the bell goes, Howard Eastman, he just comes at you. Well, he's weighing something in the region of a half a pound lighter, but he's an inch taller than the challenger from Plymouth, Scott Dan. And the fast hands of Howard Eastman are very evident in the opening half of this, the first round, scheduled for 12 three-minute rounds. Only one defeat on this uh, splendid record of Howard Eastman, and that was in his world title challenge in November of 2001. Eastman just moving nicely out of range, very economical boxer. And the great thing about Eastman is that he can box and he can punch if he has to, Rich. Yeah, I mean, Eastman is a great all-round fighter, isn't he? I mean, he, he's, he's an actual figure, tall, gangly um, boxer, but at the same time, he's very good on the inside as well. He's got some great um, uppercuts, Harold Eastman. He really has got a full range of punches, and uh, obviously he likes to work at long range and mid range, but as well, he's equally effective landing those uppercuts on the inside. Well, Scott Dan has only been defeated once, and that was by light heavyweight John Penn. Eastman nearly got him with that right hand, and Penn was the man that Eastman stopped in three. So the only common opponent. 
Yeah, Dan actually caught Eastman there as Eastman came in. I think it was a good left hand from Dan. Just waited and timed the punch to perfection and caught Eastman as he was coming in. So Howard will have to keep that right hand up. Well, Dan really, who's a, a painter and decorator by trade, has gone into full-time training for this because this is a, a golden prize for him. Three golden prizes, in fact. So Dan has uh, stood up pretty well by comparison as we come to the end of the opening three minutes of this winner-takes-all. Triple hitter, if you like. Good right hand from Scott Dan as Eastman came in and Eastman's left disappeared for a moment and Scott Dan clipped them round the chumps. What a good finish by the challenger. Well, there's the 32-year-old. By no means uh, one of the oldest in the top flight of this middleweight division. Robert McCracken, the man whom he beat for all these three titles in front of him, now his trainer. Some action from that round. There's a little initial flurry which caused Howard Eastman just a trip, so there was no uh, contact made there. But Dan in Eastman's corner looking for the opportunity and that was a sweet little right hand that was just right on the point of the jaw Richie yeah I actually thought from our position I thought it was a left hand that caught uh, Eastman but it was a short little right hook from Dan and a uh, well timed punch and uh, yeah hit the target good shot seconds out round two so nothing between them on uh, Richie's unofficial scorecard At this juncture of the fight, but you kind of wish a happy birthday tomorrow. 35, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it certainly is, Jim. 35, unbelievable. There you go. Well, there are a lot of boxers thinking about coming back uh, who are a lot <laughs> older than you, but we'd not go into that. Let's concentrate on this European Commonwealth and British middleweight title fight. Larry O'Connell has a little word with Eastman about uh, holding. Come on, Scott. Well, Eastman has had plenty of experience of handling southpaws before. Eastman again trying to keep Dan away and still Eastman's left is held very low. Yeah, it is low and Eastman's just struggling a little bit here just to um, to get to find his range and then get into his rhythm. Scott Dan's done very well up to now. He's, he's catching Eastman as he's coming in. But Eastman is just, as I said, just just struggling and finding it difficult to actually find, find his range. Well, he can bang a bit, Scott Dan, hence the nickname uh, Dynamite. 10 of his 15 wins have come inside the distance but this is a huge step up for him and he knows it which is why he's been in full-time training Eastman smiles hasn't quite got the footwork right you do expect Eastman to explode any second good footwork by Eastman again saw that right hand coming bit of holding by Dan on the blind side of referee Larry O'Connell well spotted by his vastly experienced A-star referee as indeed all three at ringside are Paul Thomas Terry O'Connor and John Keane scoring Larry O'Connell the man in the middle Eastman just probing looking for an opening good stiff right hand from Scott Dan Yeah, he's been just out of range with that jab at the moment and Scott Dan is certainly finding his range a lot better with, with his jab. Eastman is just, just not getting into range with, with the jab, he's just falling short a little bit, he's looking more to, to, towards throwing that big right hand. But the basics from Dan, uh, he's doing the basics very well at this stage, keeping a nice high, high guard and working well behind the jab. Eastman hasn't really stepped in with any great effect. He's uh, teased down a little bit and has hoped that the man from Plymouth will come to him. But Dan is boxing at this stage, a very clever challenge. Eastman seems to have trouble yet again with uh, getting his feet in the right position. He rocks back at his heels and uh, has lost his balance on more than one occasion. Well, that wasn't uh, the greatest three minutes and Howard Eastman's career, you reckon, Richie? No, I don't. I, th I thought uh, Scott Dan just did enough to take that round. 
Um, Eastman obviously is looking more impressive going foot as going forward, but he's falling short with his punches. And Scott Dan came back um, and, and hit the target on several occasions. So for me, Scott Dan just done the better work there. He did a great job of Delroy Leslie in November of last year. Stopped him in the first round, completely ambushed him. Hasn't been able to do that to Howard Eastman so far. But there was some good work went in from Scott Dan. There's a lovely stiff ramrod southpaw jab into the face of the uh, triple champion Howard Eastman. Eastman and he defeated uh, almost three years ago for all these three titles. Now in his corner, Rob McCracken. Seconds out, round three. Eastman does, shakes off a little bit of water. And already it's Dan who gets in with the first tip tap little southpaw right. Good solid right to the body from Howard Eastman Dan is boxing very cleverly it was a slap from Eastman and you wonder which will Eastman try to pick up the pace a little bit well I think that's what he's doing Jim uh, at the start of this round but he's getting caught as he's coming in he's got a low guard and uh, he's neglecting his defensive skills at this stage Howard Eastman and uh, Scott Dan he's boxing you've got to say beautifully on the back foot and, and timing those punches to perfection well, Chris Sanigo will be hugely pleased with the opening. A couple of rounds from uh, his man, Scott Dan. He's made life awkward for Eastman, who comes back. What a right hand for the champion. Dan in all sorts of trouble. Well, just as we thought Dan was looking composed and comfortable, Eastman let go with an absolute jab of a right hand. And the man they called Dynamite felt something explode at the end of the chin. And what exploded was the right hand from the triple champion. And Eastman now has got the measure of Scott Dan. Now does Dan have time to recover? We're not even halfway through this third round. And Eastman duly delivered. That just gets to show Jim how exciting this, this fellow is, Howard Eastman. For me there, he's just, he was losing the fight up until that stage, but then comes back and he's got so much power, you've got to say, stepped in, looks for the right hand, lands the right hand, and also a left up one in there. Howard Eastman, you know, he's starting to take the fight to Dan to land the bigger shot well his timing was just sensational for that right hand that put Dan down and Dan is looking a little bit anxious now because he knows why Eastman is right up there with the very best in the world in this very tough division body shot from Eastman once again good work by Dan with the left on the counter but Eastman's walking through them well every contest they say of any sporting nature has its turning point and one wonders was that the turning point look at the face of Dan he's not happy at all Eastman's got him again I don't think the three judges over inside are going to be needed for this it's now desperate Dan he's holding on desperately and look at his face he really does not really know where he is and Eastman can finish this good combination from Eastman Larry O'Connell's having a look at the game challenger who looked so good in the opening round but the sheer power and class of Howard Eastman have come storming through. Well, Scott Dunn just hasn't recovered, Jimmy. I mean, he's out on his feet here, and Howard knows this now. Eastman stepping in with the shot. Big punches going in, uppercuts and hooks. He sends his victory. He just not, not letting his man off the hook. Well, Dan's knees have gone completely. Larry O'Connell stepped in. Just about a second to go to the end of the third round. And, well, the Dan corner cannot have any complaints whatsoever to have allowed their man to come out for the fourth would have been a very very serious error of judgment and Howard Eastman exploded in the middle of that round and the Battersea bomber has bombed out the man from Plymouth in pretty spectacular style he has come back from a huge disappointment when people thought he had defeated Willie Yoppy in Las Vegas in November of 2001 this is his fifth fight in six months. He has won them all, and he has looked so good. And Howard Eastman at 32 has stood for putting up a decent challenge, but no doubt about who's won it. Howard Eastman did the business in that round with a vengeance. Took his time. What about that? Absolutely spot on. And Scott Dan, bless him, never recovered from that. It was an absolutely cracking shot. Eastman got it right little short pulled the elbow back delivered it perfectly right on the target a cracking finish and right at the end of the round Dan all over the place the knees had gone 
I'm sure the will was still there, but he was under so much pressure, and Larry O'Connell stepped in, and look at that left hand, and the right to follow wasn't needed. Good refereeing by old Larry.